too. GBM going back and studying the way people dodge Zareth ult so he can hit them more. Yeah, that's right. If you guys haven't seen the true lol show, you should check it out on the o OGN Global channel. It is subtitled with Sweet, the former Warcraft 3 star player who's their coach, and GBM. And in that series, GBM talks about how when he plays Zareth, he goes back and player by player on the enemy team studies how they juke skill shots and then will tailor his Zareth ults to how he knows they juke. That's incredible, It's pretty man. crazy, but it explains the accuracy of his skill shots. Mm -hmm. Makes it exciting. Both teams very well researched. So the bands coming out. Lee Sin Jarvan banned against the GE Tigers, targeting Lee there. Three jungle bands against him. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, interesting strategy. Yeah. See, because this means that we saw Lee not be so comfortable on the Rengar pick. Chaser, on the other hand, is a very good Rengar player. True. And also, Callista banned against Pilot. Now that's been Captain Jack's champion on Jyn Air, so that's a bit interesting. They're, t they're trying to get the Rengar for sure right here. They want the Lulu first pick because GPM has shown that he can play it very well and they really like the Rengar speed and gauge composition. So well, yeah, this really puts Lee in an awkward place because they know that Jyn Air wants a Rengar, but Lee's Rengar wasn't that great against Samsung. So do you pick it anyway? Maybe you go back to the Pantheon that he had success on earlier this season, but of course with yeah. all of these jungle bands coming through, uh, Jyn Air, Definitely taking note, I think, of his weak Rengar play and trying to tailor a strategy to abuse it in the last game. So interesting composition. They're going to take the Ezreal away from GBM and okay. grab the Rumble as well. So taking a couple away, uh, they're trying to take away the backline assassination strat that Jyn Air used in both of their last two games. Yep. This is really an interesting pick and ban phase. If you know the champion pools of these teams, uh, they may take the Corky. That you know, way, Prey may have to go with Graves or something like that, or Lucian. Jin Air grabbing that Lulu as well does also deny that dev devastating Juggernaut Kog'Maw strategy that GE yep. has done so well. That's so, a great point. That Lulu pick really does a lot of things against these GE Tigers. What do you think? Just Corky Janna, maybe? Keep the Janna away from Gorilla? Wouldn't be a bad thing to pick up the bot lane right now? Yeah, they would have some good disengage in that case. You yeah. may just want to take the Rengar right here. But they're going to take the LeBlanc, which has slipped through. GBM hasn't gotten his hands on that champion in quite some time, actually. So that's a great pickup, actually. Well, GBM also a very, very good Lulu player, too. But it looks like it won't be uh, too much of a mystery flex pick now as well. Yeah, Trace. Probably going to have Trace play that in top. Especially because you're playing into Rumble as well. You can't yeah. harass pretty easily with this Lulu. So Jyn Air. A little bit fragile, but so is GE. We don't really have any tanks coming onto the field quite yet. Well, Prey's Lucian was uh, certainly what saved the GE Tigers in their first game against Samsung back on Wednesday. Ah, Kuro's gonna grab that victor anyway. Feels very confident into the LeBlanc matchup. Okay, and there's a Rengar picked up by yep. uh, Lee, actually. I'm really surprised they went with that, but then again, we do see with all these jungle bands, it does leave pickings pretty slim. Now, Jynair has a backup plan, and it's going to be Pantheon for, they're going with really hard engage here. Wow. No kidding, Pantheon, Annie. Pantheon, Annie, and Lulu, so the huh. knockups are gonna be pretty crazy as well, but Pilot will be a little bit on his own on Corky. Now, Pilot's best champion has been Corky by far. I think the John is a bit smarter right here, but. I mean, it's certainly, provides a bit more overall utility. I think it makes it a little bit more versatile. And for a team that loves a late game so much, I think you want that. I also think that the Janna takeaway is very important. If you want to take the Pantheon, uh, having Janna be able to disrupt his jump immediately after he comes in is not going to be preferable. Well, also, we know that uh, you know, Gorilla's Annie didn't look all that great, too, when we saw it. So another kind of maybe uncomfortable pick. We haven't mentioned this yet, too, but Thresh is still available, so. Gorilla could just grab that. They are going to go with the Annie, though. And yep, Gorilla looking like he might just lock in that Thresh. Uh, I think he should go for the Janna just to help protect Kuro right there. They don't have a lot of peel for him pretty much at all. So Janna will be the, the most logical choice. And I really like the Janna-Victor combination overall. And they're going to take it. I actually think that was a mistake from Jyn Air. They should have taken the, the Janna instead of the Annie. Well, we'll see how Lee can do on his second game on Rengar. I mean, it was only one game, but keep in mind, Jyn Air has information that goes beyond just that match. You know, they know what's going on in scrims. They know what's going on in solo queue. And they've uh, kind of identified Rengar as kind of a weak point for Lee. Lee says no, though. He's he like, really, nope, I'm going to play Rengar anyway. He really was quite bad.
uh, in the first game against Samsung. There's no way to sugarcoat it. He didn't do anything with his ultimates. He wasn't seen as proficient in ganking. When, he com when we compare him to big Rengar players like Chaser or what we've seen out of Peanut so far, the impact was very minimal from Lee's end. So I don't blame them for trying to select or basically create this strategy in the ban phase. We'll see if it works. Well, a chance for redemption for Lee's Rengar. Will the hunt be a bit more successful this time, or will he come back once again empty-handed? Well, it's like he did get the win, I guess, with Rengar, but that's more like you go deer hunting and then you accidentally hit one with your car on the way home after not shooting one all day. <laughs> that's kind of like <laughs> that least successful analogy. hunt. You know, it's like, well, I got a deer, but it wasn't really, you know, how I intended. And it's, I guess. it's kind of mangled and uh, yeah, the meat's it's pretty, not it's really pretty ugly. Good. You have to like call the DNR and they're like, yeah, you can take it home. Well, here we go, guys. Jin Air versus GE. Let's get in the game. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift, Jin Air, Green Wings versus GE Tigers. GBM picking up that LeBlanc for the first time in a long time. The fans are into it. Uh, he played a lot at the beginning of the season with pretty good success. Uh, Kuro, of course, will be having some issues trying to hit the skill shots against LeBlanc. And we'll see how this matchup goes, obviously, with Victor's pretty recent introduction into the scene. I'm not the most familiar with his matchups. Mm -hmm. Too much, couldn't read it fast enough. Pilot sees Gorilla right there and vice versa, but not a whole lot of wards yet. Looks like GE playing pretty far back at this stage. Oh, not time yet. Sign is not completed. He's just psyching himself up. He's like, all right, this time, this time I will actually kill people with my ult at least once. Well, you know, he's not really going to have a very easy time. With this Rengar, question becomes, where do you gank, really? I guess it, you can try and gank Annie. It's probably the, the most likely target you're going to find. Well, it's certainly the squishiest and the least mobile, so. Yeah, it's just that Rumble without that hard CC, Lulu will have somewhat of an easy time getting away from that. We are actually going to see a lane swap coming in. From both teams, in fact. Che is actually just here on the bottom side, about to leash this red. Now they're going to see the duo lane up in the top side. So it looks like Jinair was not expecting to find GE up here. Che will just help out. Yep. And then join Lulu in the bottom side. Meanwhile, Rumble also heading down immediately. So okay. interesting situation developing. But Pilot. Ooh, really yeah, early gank is, coming in for Che and Chaser. They've got that stun loaded up on Annie. This is why they picked Annie, actually. This is why yep. they lane swapped as well, because they want this gank. This could be very good against Kuro. Kuro going back. Oh, and Chaser flashes. He gets a bullet. There's some damage, and Kuro could be in trouble. And he goes down first blood, taken by Jin Air Ooh. Chaser already. And both summoners used by Kuro. Uh-oh. Yep. And two flashes and an ignite used as well. Now, interestingly, look at how they planned this gank out because this was premeditated. They used the ignite from Annie and not the ignite from GBM. They wanted GBM to have both summoners up so we can all in him again in just a little bit once he has the advantage. So this is looking several minutes into the future. And Jin Air, I was curious why the lane swap was happening right here, especially because theoretically the Lulu uh, can deal with the rumble pretty nicely in lane, and obviously Ezreal Janna not very threatening in the early game. Mm. So this is why. They had this mapped out right away. They wanted to get the Pantheon Annie gank immediately at level two for Pantheon, and they got it. it worked out. So that explains the Annie pick right there. That explains the lane swap. They had this strategy premeditated 100% in case of a victor pick. Oh, might make it pretty tricky now for Kuro. He's having no trouble so far just pushing up that lane. GPM's going to be fine with it. Kuro, okay, he gets a nice deep ward into the uh, jungle there. Well, he's super scared now because Should be. this hard CC from Pantheon does make his life very difficult. He has to be pushed up in a situation where he doesn't have flash. And now they're reliant on Lee's Rengar for counter ganks. And 
Lee has previously demonstrated that he's not really up to the task of playing Rengar particularly well. Here we go, yep. Chains. Uh, stunned again, and Pantheon comes in for yet another Sun. Kuro locks up Chaser and GBM. Oh, but GBM, the final auto gets him. Lee comes in, passive pop for LeBlanc. And that's going to be another clean gank for Jin Air. This time the kill going on to GBM. This really couldn't be a yep. better start for Jin Air. Great early game strategy from Jin Air. They're trying to push up the wave right now. Chaser helping out to deny as much farm as possible. This strategy is all based around Kuro. And these interesting pick and bans that we saw really uh, look brilliant from Jin Air. The GBM, I don't know, man. He's going in. Oh, he waited for the recall from Chaser to go through, and Gank by Mom trying to make it out with that distortion. He does just barely. Wow, nice nice patience from Lee, though, with the pink ward in wow. the brush, nearly getting that. And GBM should not have been recalling there. No. Nope, that really does. Poor choice of locations for that. Does mess up their early game strategy a little bit, unfortunately, for GBM, but at least he didn't die. Yeah. GBM is going to come back into lane with a, a couple rings and a fiendish codex, so way up on items on Kuro, and Kuro's going to have to start dealing with a lot of poke, I think, in this 1v1. Yeah, he's got two minutes, too, before he can deal with that. Now, they are going to ping Pantheon again. Kuro was very smart to put down that ward there, so he's aware that this is still a major threat, and GBM just continues to play back. This is so annoying for Kuro to deal with. Look at this minion wave pushing right back into the turret. The minion wave control has been excellent here in mid. What an interesting game so far. Yeah. Just from the strategy. Oh, oh what? Whoa, whoa, oh, ah. oh. Oh, new mechanics, <laughs> teleporting. Exciting stuff. Uh, Gorilla moved down a little bit just in case Kuro was going to get ganked again. But so far, the camping of the mid lane has worked out very, very well for the Jinair Green Wings. Man, that, that ward has really been worth it for Kuro. It's helping him get CS that he probably shouldn't be able to get right there, although it's not going to be quite so easy well, once he can... moves to the top side. But Lee's helping out at least with the warding. And so they will have a lot of vision control around the mid lane in order to make these plays. Yeah, you can see that GE is really trying to do more to keep Kuro safe at this point. And Jenner doing kind of what Jenner does. They love to chip these towers early, especially in Trace's lane. He will pick champions with a lot of wave clear and play very far forward. He's well, got a pink got ward it. there to keep him safe. And the thing about Jin Air right now is they know it's so safe to do this. Rengar's only level four, and he has to babysit mid lane right now, or else Kuro will just continue to die. So he's going to have to wait very close to the mid lane, try and get the counter gank. So Jin Air is really free in the side lanes to push and keep on pushing. And look at the wards too. Top side, pink and river, and then a deep ward right by the golems. It just expired. But there's nearly no way for Rengar to make a play onto a side lane right now. Wow. Jin Air really coming into this one with a pretty beautiful plan. Right. And we'll see if they continue to have plans. It's a best of three, and that's why these best of series are so good, because is the, the question is, is this a one-off for Jin Air, or do they have a more complete playbook coming into tonight? Yeah. A Lee and Gorilla waiting for an opportunity on the Chaser here. Will they take it? They've got that ward. Chaser face checks that brush, but GBM right there to add some damage on the Gorilla. Trace in the blue buff pit. They're going to blow up Gorilla. GBM caught a bit. Wild Growth will keep him alive for now. Lee doesn't quite Kuro's get only there. five. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to do a whole lot. Oh, goodbye, Lee. Kuro has to back away. GBM still alive. He may get taken off by Smeb. Meanwhile, oh, the whimsy, but the damage before it wasn't enough to finish Kuro off. GBM being very deceptive. And he's going to get around the jungle. out in the end. They use the time, here comes Prey. It, oh. Used it to clear the wave. I see. That was much <laughs> much less exciting than we were anticipating there, I suppose. <laughs> Meanwhile, we got to see that uh, was Traces. A, that was a buzz kill, Della. <laughs> for, once, for once, it was actually uh, the players killing the hype <laughs> and not you, wow. Well, they're taking the mantle. And a very Passing strong, the torch, huh? a very strong early game from Jenner yeah. sees them with a 2.5k gold lead. And this is a really good sign for Jenner. They haven't typically been this aggressive or willing to push the envelope in the early game, instead relying on their strength and their shot calling late to pull out wins. But this is an exceptionally good opportunity to snowball out in this game. And they are getting very scary indeed. Trace in the mix coming up at the right time. And that's because he had that lane pushed up. He's got this extra speed from Lulu's Whimsy as well, was able to join up for that fight and really make a difference right there. GBM 
takes out a pink ward and chasers level six. Yeah, this is so really... is Lee. So where is the play going to be made next? Well, it's cool with uh, oh, man, GBM Jay. as well too. Is he's got a Negatron cloak. He didn't bother finishing a chalice or anything like that. He just got himself more tanky against the damage that he's going to be facing in the near future here too, which I think is really smart. Yeah, he may be a bit too conservative because if you want to get the snowball rolling, sometimes it's better to have those those damage items. But there is something to be said against the double AP composition for I perhaps mean, going for an early abyssal. I think when you see Kuro go boots too instead of pick up like another ring or something, you're like, all right, well. Yeah. He will be taking very little damage from Kuro, that's for sure. Yeah. This map should be, be occupied too. Chaser is really far ahead in the jungle as well, already finishing the warrior enchant. That's a huge power spike compared to Lee, who's sitting at a single long sword at the moment. 2-0-2. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, looks like the bot lane duos back to where you would normally expect to find them. But poor Kuro, starting to fall behind a little bit in CS now. Yeah, Jin Air pretty firmly in the lead at the moment. Haven't been able to take a major objective quite yet, but they have gotten the better end of turret damage so far, and Kuro just can't do anything. Look at he's just standing next to his turret. He's so afraid at, the, at this point of walking out and getting Pantheon ulted yeah. that he's just not even willing to farm, and it's pushing back towards GBM, so it's really, really rough right now. Not a whole lot Kuro can do in this situation besides try and make a play outside the laning phase, and okay, so they get spotted right there. Lee does put down a ward at the right time and pops Chaser's Raptor buff. And they clear out that little bit of vision and well if they can get that blue buff stolen and given over to GBM or really anybody too that's kind of that's kind of one of the final nails in the coffin for this uh, Victor that curls playing too yeah it's a really bad situation yeah Oh, Equalizer used Smep trying to escape from Tracer and Chase, but they get the knockup with the wild growth. Smep still low, no flash. Will they dive? It doesn't look like they want to try that. Not with wild growth already used, I suppose. And unfortunately, not a very good gank for Jin Air. Yeah. Uh, they did use the Pantheon and the wild growth, Pantheon ult rather, and the wild growth in order to try and affect that Smep with a nice escape using the Equalizer. And didn't even have his flash up, but still got out of there. Yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, Flash is down all across the board in that gank, so it really was just going to be the ultimates that made the difference. GPM with a little bit of damage onto Lee as he tries to defend that ward, but can't quite do it. Now, it took Lee a long time to use his ult for his first gank in the game against Samsung. We're seeing that a bit here as well. He has been six for a little bit now, but hasn't found that right opportunity. Gorilla is going to come into the mid lane. They're going to feel a bit safer now that Pantheon's ultimate is no longer available. But do you see Prey alone in the bottom lane going for the Manamune as a first item? And no one dares take a dragon yet. Yeah. Trace playing a little further back right now. Well, team fight wise, even though, you know, Jin Air may be ahead in gold from kills. GE Tiger still has that rumble, you know, they still have a lot of AOE from uh, Victor as well, too. So I think that does make the dragon fight a bit more even than the uh, gold totals look, make it look right now, you know? Yeah, it's true, especially in fighting at this point in the game. But yeah. in the late game, I'm worried for the GE Tigers. They do have some good backline damage with the Death Ray, the Equalizer, and the True Shot Barrage. So in essence, they're sort of playing a Jin Air style composition this game where they want to get some assassination down, but Pilot's really going to be the only one in jeopardy of that because everyone else is just so damn mobile and they constantly have to be worried about Pantheon coming in from behind and getting on top of Victor. And with Victor already falling behind, he's, I mean, he's so immobile and he's got to deal with Pantheon, Whimsy, Champions, and a LeBlanc. I don't really know how Kuro plans to stay alive even in the back line this game. Yeah. He just doesn't have a lot of peel beyond the Janna ultimate. He's managed to catch up mostly in farm so far. Janna is a little bit ahead across the board there. And GE working with that vision outside of the dragon. So maybe, maybe they're thinking about setting something up in the next few minutes or so. Be really hard to 
do so. Here comes Rengar through the enemy jungle. This is a pretty bold play. There's some wards going down. They may just try and, no, they're not gonna go for it. They can't do it when the lane is pushed up and bottom like this. Be way too difficult. Chaser's been waiting in that brush. He has not been seen. He's trying to counter gank with his ult right now. But they're not going to fall for the bait. Here we oh, go. he's going for it anyway. Coming down, they get the stun on the gorilla. And there's Chaser coming in for the kill. Great Frank flash on the ult. Yep. Poked by some rockets, but manages to make it out. And that was just a really good combination of stuns from uh, Che and Chaser there. And look at that too. I mean, two flashes used on the Jyn Air side, only one from GE, but they get the support, and that means they're going to get the Dragon. So all that time that GE just spent warding around that objective, not really going to be particularly useful. Oops. Prey will shoot a true shot barrage in, but Chaser's gonna take it. GBM will use his W to dodge the true shot barrage, and it's gonna be yet another advantage for Jyn Air that have played I think this is their best early game so far this season, especially yeah. against an opponent, the quality of GE. Well, it's so clean, and the ganks have been so successful. Like, you just don't see people gank the GE Tigers like this. It's a very good game plan. Now, GE, to talk about them in terms of strategy, Whoa. they've run Victor in their last five games. They've just picked him. No changes from Kuro. This has been their strategy. Now, I think the mentality here is, if we can continue to get away with picking Victor and not show anything else that we have for IEM, that that's going to be ideal. So coming into this one, we'll see how deep GE wants to play in terms of their strategies right before a major international tournament. Uh, because they may just pick Victor again and say to hell with it. If we're going to lose, we're just going to lose here instead of showing what we have. Yeah, and again, I in mean... Advance. Like we mentioned already, they're 9-0. A loss here, technically, standings-wise, it'd yeah, be acceptable. it would be. It's not really a very big deal for them to lose yeah. a single match. And indeed, odds are at some point they're going to lose a match this season. They have been very strong so far. But, yeah. I mean, with each team playing 14 best of threes, it's a tall order not to lose one of those. Well, it's pretty amazing that they've only lost two games total so far this season. Right. Topter getting a little bit low too. Jyn'Air continuing to just chip away at those objectives early on. Kuro has basically caught up in CS, only seven down at the moment, which isn't a big number at this point. I think the most disturbing aspect, Doa, is that what GE, I think, has to be worried about is at the very least, the pick and ban phase has shown a weakness that they have, and that's Lee's champion pool. Mm. Uh, because we know that his Rengar isn't great from the last match, and the fact that he chose to take it again is a bit interesting, and not something that I necessarily agree with. He has played Pantheon earlier, but this is going to be, I think, a bit of a wake-up call about, hey, maybe you might want to be playing something different if this is going to cause some issues. Well, it's a, it's a little bit bizarre because you normally don't see that many jungle bans, you know? So I think it's just something that GE just wasn't expecting. Well, especially because there are viable junglers. Certainly Rengar is a viable jungler. Is he top tier like some of the other ones? No, he's not. Uh, he's more compositionally reliant, I would say, especially in the late game. But uh, the fact that Lee is just really not very good on this champion is... is a little bit concerning yeah. if you're a GE Tigers fan. Lee is lurking in the brushes, trying to find an opportunity to lane gank. GBM coming down, though. Chaser is there. Great ward. He's standing in a ward, though. Really good ward. Yep. Look at the wards, actually, that GE got down. Even though they've been behind, their warding has been stellar. And they're trying to make sure that Chaser doesn't have an opportunity to get a good ultimate off. You see all the pings going down right now. Victor backs off immediately. So they're warding like they would against a Rengar, which is very deep in order to make sure that they have vision over where he's ulting to. Yeah, that's Or where he could be ulting to at the very least. You really have to catch a Rengar, you know, as he's ulting or right before he ults. Because if you just put it right on the edge of the lane like the wards normally go, he's already going to be invisible by that point. Right, and the Pantheon, same yeah. story, so. It also makes it more dangerous, because obviously getting those deep wards in doesn't come without its own fair share of risk. Hey man, if you're a support, you're used to the dangerous warding <laughs> missions. And then if you die, you just type shrug, dangerous of warding. <laughs> oh well, it happens. 
Chaser still looking for something right here. Oh, There's the ults. The, uh, uh, on to Jay. Jay flashes are going to turn around with that timber stun. Lee has to get away with his own flash. Meanwhile, Prey comes down, adding on some damage. Pilot forces a Valk away. Trace comes up. He uses teleport to come down. Both top laners in the mix now. Lee still very low health. And here comes GBM, dragging up in about a minute 30. GBM over the wall to try to make something happen. Gets out before being knocked up by that whirlwind. So no kills in the end. Blue buff still going to GE. GE just has no idea how to play around a Rengar. I mean, that was a very questionable ult. And they had lost vision control. All the wards went down about 20 seconds prior to the Rengar ult. And so they thought they may be able to catch Chase Annie out in the river, but Pantheon right behind. So they're quite easily able to respond. And they still have Panthol, meanwhile. Thrill of the Hunt is down for Rengar. Yeah, so Lee's a little bit lucky that he didn't get killed there. First turret goes down in favor of Jin Air. Yeah, this is really bad. Now they have control over Dragon. Do you see Lee on the top side? Whether Jin Air is actually going to try and make a play here at Dragon number two remains to be seen. Victor Kuro at least does have some survivability thanks to his Abyssal Scepter, but Jin Air already clearing out. They have total control over the river right now. They're going to get the crab as well. No, they're not. Why aren't they taking the crab? <laughs> Merciful. Sometimes you just got to leave the crab alone, you know? You're like, he's a pretty chill guy. Well, I'm very, we don't need I'm that very surprised you wouldn't just take that right now, considering dragging up in 15 seconds. I mean, they've got a ward sitting right where crab normally camps out. It's after about you this speed him, shrine, though. It's really, really useful it's true too. for dodging poke and skill shots which Victor and Ezreal certainly have, so. Oh, they're coming down now, GBM with the wall. A lot of damage on the Lee, is that actually enough? He didn't ignite. If, if he, he would have ignited, ignited. That is a mistake right there from GBM. I don't think even I, GBM expected I, to do that much damage. I think you're right, yeah. I don't think he thought he was going to be able to get Lee that low. Forces a recall. Lane pushed up and here we go. Pantheon, Chaser going deep. He's it's coming in. Gold. A zoning ult to take out the turret, and uh, they can probably grab Dragon on the way back. Well, Lee's back up. It might be a little bit riskier. We'll see what they do. Oh, they have, they can certainly just keep on poking right here. Uh, Jin Air should not walk into that choke against the the uh, Rumble. And look at that crab now taken by GE. So some mistakes here, I think, from Jin Air. They certainly don't oh, have to Oh, here we go. GBM over, over the wall does not use the Ignite again, but didn't quite get his full combo down on Akuro. Sorry, he got the damage down, though. The good yeah. amount of poke necessary. You see GE trying to make this. Lee is ulting. They want to make a play right. Nope, it's going to be a, oh. Oh, oh the oh, dragon oh. regening some health. OK, so at half health, here we go. GBM threatening a little bit. Whirlwind on cooldown now. Gorilla used it to knock some people off. Dragon a little bit low. There's the ult, and it does get taken by Chaser. Just walks up and smites it. Then they smite Lee to death as well. Wild growth keeps Pilot alive as he Valkyries out of the fight. And now Jin Air can turn this one around a little bit. We'll see if they can pick up any more kills here. Flash over the wall. GBM in the back lines to try to do some damage to Smep. Dodges that Flame Spitter. GBM gets out OK. Ah, but there's a Chaos Storm. Jin Air needs to be careful. That's a double kill now for Kuro and GE turning this one around again. So Jin Air really over eager in this fight. They get the Dragon, but it costs them a kill. When everything's all said and done, it was one for two in favor of the GE Tigers, but losing that Dragon as well. So what would you say? Kind of a, a wash at the end of the day there? Oh, no. A big win for Jin Air. Jin Air managed to get the Dragon. They got the mid turret as well. Let's take a look at this team fight again. So they catch Lee out with the Timbers right there. They do burst him down. And then they split around the Equalizer nicely. Smeb tries to get a good shot off, but everybody moves out of the way. Now Jin Air just needs to back off right here. You can't fight around that speed shrine like they're doing. Does make it a little bit too dangerous. Prey will flash over the wall. Jay tries to follow up, but he gets hit by the Chaos Storm. Then everybody kind of just runs into the Chaos Storm afterwards. That's exactly yeah. where you want to fight. If you're GE in those chokes with Chaos Storm, with Equalizer, not a good plan for Jin Air to commit like that. They still have a major lead in this game. But certainly they could have just. Well, they could have gotten out without losing anybody. Too. Yeah, because they should have just taken the. Had the, they, they engaged at a great time on that dragon, managed to take it out, managed to take out Lee, that's when you back off. And then they could have saved their mid lane tier one as well. So Jin Air, no need to go in that deep. They thought they had a chance because Equalizer didn't really hit anybody, but can't underestimate Victor, especially with all this 
the magic shred that he already has on the Abyssal Scepter. True enough. Well, now we'll see what Janair can do with this. They've shown themselves to be a bit vulnerable by overreaching that last fight. And this is kind of that time where you need to be very careful because a team like the GE Tigers will be able to take advantage of every little mistake you make. Yeah, that said though, this is we're moving into the phase where Jinair is at their strongest and the fact that they already have this significant lead means that GE really may have some major problems to deal with it. I, uh, GE did play this early game as well as they could considering the near flawless execution of Jinair's prepared strategy. Blue buff going to be going over to GBM. Yeah, really starting to take advantage of this. Chaser with the 100% kill contribution rate so far. He's really been pivotal in his team's efforts. Yeah, this Pantheon's been this game. It's really, really good. good. Yeah, really good. Reminds me of Lee's Pantheon earlier in the <laughs> season. I don't know why Lee didn't pick Pantheon. He was a great Pantheon. Yeah. Only played it uh, that one series, I believe. Yeah, and here games. comes the Pantheon played by Chaser. They're going to try to go on to Bray here. Turret oh, goes they down. destroyed the turret. No more TP. Yeah, can they catch him? Looks like they can. Use that chilling smite to get in there, and that's an easy kill. Mistake Trace by Smith. picking up that one. Really big mistake by Smith. That turret had no HP on it. Yeah. And he wasted his teleport trying to get up there. Good read from Jin Air, just with the one auto attack coming in from Lulu. And now TP advantage to Janair. That is that's so big. Of course, there aren't any objectives right now, but it makes it all too easy just to all in on the bottom laner, make a play. Look how deep all of the wards are as well. So many different locations for Lulu to TP to safely. Yeah. This is, uh, Janair's had a lot of great games this season, Della, but this is by far the cleanest we've seen them play. I think so. And GE, I think this is the, uh, I mean, they lost a, a couple games, but I feel like this, in this game, they've been outplayed more than we've seen before, too. Uh, I think they were punished in their draft. And GE was eager not to show anything new, but that does make them very readable. And the Victor pickup caused Jyn Air to take the, an the Annie and the Pantheon and then make that play on the mid lane. So Jyn Air got the composition that they want. They came in with a plan against some of these more immobile mids that Kuro likes to take. Kuro didn't respect that hard CC, and they committed a lot of summoners. Had they not gotten that kill, they could have wasted multiple flashes in that first mid lane gank and not gotten anything in return. But instead, they started out this massive snowball, which has just been picking up speed. And that dragon coming up in less than a minute now might help Jyn Air push that even farther. Lee, Alt, he's going to try to go into the flash, locks out GBM, but look at that. Tibbers comes in, Chain a little bit of trouble, kills traded. But I think Jyn Air is happy to pick up yet another one on Lee, and I think another demonstration of Lee just not being the greatest Rengar we've seen. GE used four ults for that with 30 seconds until dragon. So that is a really, really big commitment. Meanwhile, Pantheon ult's still available for use. So they have to make something happen right here, but G doesn't really have the tools to do it anymore. Ooh, Chaser ate a lot of unnecessary damage. Yeah, he did. Oh, oh my oh, pilot. Pilot coming in to try to save him. What was he thinking? <laughs> pilot, you aren't a support player. Oh, meanwhile, Prey gets very low via GBM, but yeah, a little bit of pilot just. What that was, was that? That was called going ultra ham. <laughs> Wow, well, Whoops. Uh, that was a huge mistake from Jyn Air. Yeah. Pilot, that's, he's, he never Valks forward like that I, normally. I don't know, I mean, man. He's such a, he's such a patient I cost AD the carry too. in the back line. That's the first time I've ever seen him really get that aggressive. It seems like this would be hard to believe happening, but I almost wonder if he meant to phosphorus bomb and just hit the wrong key. I don't know. I, I, it's, I, it's just so out of character that you got to wonder. Very strange. Wow. Well, GE gets a turret off of that as well. So yeah. let's take a look at this again. Chaser walks up too far forward. He wants to get that ward down. There's a pink ward. Oh, boy. That's got to be a mistake. I, I Well, I mean, obviously it's a mistake, but I think that that almost looks like a misclick to me Jeez. because that's a situation where you could toss a, a Phosphorus Bomb with Corky and then back off, you know? But 
That was that was awful though. He fouled right to where you would be tossing that bomb, so I don't know. It's so, a bit odd. But yeah, cost him a dragon, cost him a turret. Yeah, that's that's huge. That gives GE a really good leg hold or foothold rather back up into this game. And Pilot has that Bloodthirster as his second item, so getting some tankiness to deal with the burst from GE, but he's just pretty low damage right now. Meanwhile, Prey is starting to get scary. Muramana and the Blade of the Ruin King. Uh, Pilot really needs, I don't know what he'll be going next, probably Infinity Edge would be the best item considering the lack of armor. Get start really rolling in with some big crits. It's gonna be a long time before he has that though. And another tower for GE. Yeah. So Jin Air really not responding well. Yeah, they seem a bit shaken in this at the mid game. There's still 3K and a dragon up, so they should feel comfortable. And also, they have much better engage in the late game than the GE Tigers do. And Lee keeps getting caught out. Well, I wonder if we're going to see Jin Air just kind of fall back into that ultra passive. Let's play for the super late game mode now. They I think I think they can just sit around and wait for Lee to try and engage on them because Lee is really not a Rengar player. He's not even looking for flanks right now. He just kind of ults and runs at them, dies immediately, and then Jin Air has a 4v5, or a 5v4. If they had played it better in the last time, sure, Che died, but GE committed so many cooldowns into that engagement and only killed a support who had already dropped the Tibbers. Well, Jin Air cleaning out some of the wards around Baron now. Got that vision for the moment, getting the Rift Scuttler as well. That's Meb's done with Leandris. Going to be doing a decent amount of damage. We'll see if Jin Air can get any sort of pick. Baron checked by Prey. Oh, he didn't actually hit the Baron, though, so he didn't aggro it. Well, lots Whoa. of wards getting clear. GM trying to poke Prey out, using the double distortion with his ultimate to move on forward. And just a lot of clearing right now as Jin Air wants to get a pick with all their crowd control right around the pit right here, and they have total vision at the moment. Smem's gonna go back. Well, I think after what happened, Jynair seems a little bit a little bit shook up. They've suddenly become much more passive than they've been all game. GE's still a bit slow. Oh, where's oh, he going? Dandel coming in, they're gonna try to catch Gorilla and Lee. It's not gonna work though. Oops. Uh, look at the difference in Trinket upgrades right now between Jin Air and GE. GE again, very slow on that front. Meanwhile, double Oracle's lenses, double stealth totems. Oh, GBM, gotta be careful there, getting low. Wow, that passive popped in GBM. Nearly dead, two shot barrage Flash flashes out of the heal. way. Yeah, Pilot popping the summoner heal to try to help him get out of that one. And GE Tiger was with a lot of pressure on this mid lane turret now. Is the wave clear gonna be good enough for Jin Air? Looks like they have it, but they took some damage on that turret. Well, so did GE. A lot of poke from pilots, missiles. That prey got hit pretty hard. Not sure what GBM is thinking. Jin Air falling apart a little bit. People need to continue to play as a unit. This isn't the same kind of, wow. Ooh. GBM is real scary. Well, there's a reason why he's not allowed to play that LeBlanc in most games. Jynair going right to the Baron. And they're gonna start it. Wow, going for this Baron. Lee has Smite. They use Wild Growth. This is a really all-in attempt. I'm not sure I agree with this, though. I don't know if they need to, you know? I mean, that's the thing. But we'll see. GE Tiger is coming in. Smep has an Equalizer loaded up. Lee, they're gonna turn onto him. Lee gets caught! Oh, man, and Jynair turns off of the Baron. Ended up working out pretty well after all, and Lee, just wrong place, long, wrong time. Well, they just got one kill, though, so they had to use Flash Ignite from Che onto Lee only. I think they and then they admit, lost some vision control, so. I think they made the best of a bad situation there. They weren't uh, going to be able to do the Baron. They didn't want to lose a team fight. It was a good turn, but I think that using the wild growth so early on was maybe not the best decision. Yeah. Jenner playing with uh, Kind of a level of desperation that we normally don't see from them. They they end up being very cool and collected in the late game a lot of the time. I mean, they got a pretty sizable early lead. It just seems like you know, they're thinking to themselves, we're so close, you know? But 
they can just be the Jyn'Air we've seen all season. They can drag this out to an hour. And they have that Dragon Edge, too. Yeah. Two to one, and looks like they're about to get another one. I don't really think GE will we'll see. They have no wards right now, so it's going to be really hard for them to contest this. And Jyn'Air. Back in. Oh, GBM, are they going to try to catch him? They will. Equalizer goes through. It looks good. Smab with the kill on the gank by Mob. Now one on to Jay. G Tigers charging down the river. Chaser tried to distract him, and he did. He came in with the ultimate. They're going to turn on him, force a flash. But GE Tigers with another team fight win. Dragon is live. They might pass it up. Yeah, they're just heading right towards that Baron. Wow. GBM and Lee. Lee has missed a lot of skill shots so far this game, but he landed it when it counts. That yeah. hero bola to catch GBM out right there and secure the pick was incredible. And I don't know if Jin is going to be able to stop this Baron. Oh, Trace is going to try his hardest to do it. Kuro adding on the damage. There's a Baron now for the GE Tigers. Jin Air going back onto the Dragon. They'll be able to pick up their third, it looks like. But GE coming down the river. Don't think they're going to quite get there in time. Oh, but the teleport from Smeb, that certainly changes things. The Dragon does go to Jin Air, but will they lose anyone? Chaser will go down. Another kill for Kuro. Pilot getting tracked down by Smeb. They're just going to push him right back into his lane. Yeah, Smeb a bit. Too aggressive on the flash right there, but great teleport use. So we do have a dragon secured that puts it at number three. Oh, oh gorilla. nice job by GBM. Manages yep. to find him right in the river thanks to a ward. So that's one less Baron. Bob Jenner has to worry about True Shot Barrage, trying to chunk people out. Mandela, this game has been so back and forth. Oh, I know, yeah. Tiny little mistakes made by each team. Good capitalization on those by the other one. This is a close one. And check this out, GBM going after Gorilla right here. That was a little mistake, that cost him big time. Well, he didn't see the Rengar. Lee was in the middle of an ult right there and did manage to catch him out with a great Bola. Good collapse from GE. Now we have Whoa. more fighting going on, actually. Equalizer was dropped, no kills occurred, but they are trying to stall out GE a little bit. GE with the gold lead for the really the first time in this game. Yeah. And, and look point. at the itemization. Gorilla got QSS. So he is very worried about getting caught out in this game. I can't remember the last time I saw a support get that item yeah. before any other major purchase. Extra HP, too, with the Ruby Sightstone. They have an Aegis onto Lee as well. I mean, you can't really, uh, honestly, you can't really question that. I mean, you need to be alive as long as you can to put down those shields to get the knockups of Whirlwind. It's really about stalling out the uh, the Pantheon engage as well. Oh, Curl takes that blue buff, too. Because you need to stay alive until Pantheon engages so that you have the Monsoon and you don't get boxed in. Well, Jyn Air certainly on the back foot now, despite being up in kills a bit. Chaser looking for an opportunity. He's been moving back and forth between the lanes. He knows there aren't wards there, but that tower is falling so fast. Yeah, GE just wrecking that one with their Baron buff. All five members of the team there. Now they can just rotate back to mid lane. Yeah, Baron buff nearly off, however. So that will not be a threat for much longer. Jin Air managed to stall out most of the Baron buff through some aggressive play in the enemy jungle. But maybe they'll be able to take this next turret. Not a lot of HP right there. I think they're just going to have to give this one up. Yeah, oh, Jay coming in. Nice stun onto Kuro and Gorilla. Here comes Pantheon, GBM on the outside of the fight now. He got back Chaser in the middle of everything. He goes down, but he causes enough disruption that maybe Jyn Air can do this one. Prey, heavily damaged, but look at Smeb just roasting Pilot. Ignited the gas tank there, I guess. I GBM has to run. Uh, everybody may have to walk back right now, and well, GBM, GBM going for it. He gets prey. Wow, nice play by GBM, but it's still probably not going to be. Oh, it did actually save their inhibitor turret. Yeah, Kuro way too low. No more yeah. Zonia's Hourglass right there, so there's not a good way for him to stay alive. GE using that double Zonia's Power Spike really nicely. A second Che comes in, gets a double stun down, tries to make it back out. Oh, that is a terrible wild growth from Trace, by the way. Che is done at that point. He just, it doesn't matter if he dies or not. So you really needed to save the wild growth. He could have had a four man knockup yeah. had he had it saved for Chaser. Really a bad old decision from Trace right there. Wow. You don't, you never, almost never wild growth the Annie. 
because uh, that's a big once issue. she uses tippers in one cooldown rotation, there's really no reason to keep her alive anymore, especially when you have a Pantheon that you know is coming in. Big misplay by Trace. Yeah, almost makes you wonder if there's a bit of miscommunication there if they weren't aware that Chaser was going to make that move. Wow, if, if that wild growth had been used on Chaser upon entry, it would have been really a much different team fight. Yeah, yeah Janair would have won that one pretty handily. In the meantime, dragging up at about a minute 45 again. Wow, Void Staff's done for both Trace and GBM right now, so with all of this, MR piling on, Locket, and the two Abyssal Scepters, as well as Prey going for that Scimitar. GE just really committing to the QSS builds this game and that MR. It's serving them well. It's, it's actually really helping them get back into this one because Jyn Air has picked that majority AP damage composition with Corky as the AD carry. Ali tried to ult there, but couldn't find anybody, so that's going to be down for a little bit. Dragging up in a minute, so that may come back to haunt him. Oh, Prey. GBM just doing so much damage now. GBM has that lead. Props to Kuro, though. He's bounced back so nicely in this one after just yep. being totally shut down early. He's actually ahead in CS now. What a comeback for him. Not bad at all. More warding comes in. Yeah, Janair not wanting to get flanked in any way, shape, or form. Not wanting to get hit with that Rengar ult, not know where it's coming from. Well, Joe, the more I watch this game, though, the more I think GE is going to take this best of three. Because even though Lee has had such a poor game, GE has actually managed to make a pretty significant comeback right here. Yeah. Look at that. Not a whole lot of damage. No. That MR really doing work. Great job by GE Tigers. Yep, they're going to charge on the mid lane now. And can Jyn Air stop them? Bearing up in, again in about a minute. Dragging up in 10. Nice threat right there. Now Chaser could go in. There are no wards. Oh, here we go. Lee tries to turn back on to Pilot. Pilot, Valkyrie is away. Lee takes a lot of damage, though. Chaser still moving around the outside. He got the Rift Scuttler. So they are going to see everyone in the immediate vicinity of the mouth of the pit. They commit to this. Looks like they're trying. Chaser thinking about coming in with that Pantheon pilot advancing. They get the kill on Dali. Prey in a little bit of trouble as Chaser comes down on top of him. Manages to get out though. Gets cleansed. Whoa! GBM nearly blown up by Kuro in that chaos storm. They got Lee though, and with they a did. Baron up in 13 seconds, they may try and just go for it. If Trace Kuro. is recalling right now, he has his TP. GBM's got the home guards. It is a very tight window, but it's possible. I think if Kuro had been able to land that Ignite, that would have been a dead GBM there, too. They Wasn't didn't get either it. Zonias, though, and that's scary, because Smeb can just... Oh, we found him. Oh, oh, Jay, oh, he misses the Flash Tibbers. That one hurts. And Janeiro, oh, they're oh, going to go for the Baron. Oh, this is so Baron. dangerous now. Yeah, Two Zonias. Man. Smeb can equalize her, then Zonia nice snap with heal. his uh, Flame Spitter on like that. Well, Kuro's out of the fight. Smeb drops the equalizer. They scare Janeiro Gen away. No kills, though. Wow, Kuro just living with a tiny, minuscule amount of health. Whoa, Whoa. true shot barrage. I don't think it would have killed either one of them, but it was still close enough to worry Che a little bit. Man, GE is just fighting tooth and nail this game. They've really done a remarkable job of coming back. Yeah, well, we don't often get to see them kind of play from behind like this, so this has been interesting seeing how they've been able to respond. Jyn Air giving him a few opportunities, though. So. Yeah, this is a great game. Mm -hmm. Just a, such good back and forth in terms of strategy, in terms of itemization. GBM has that elixir of sorcery right now. GBM still has a Doran's ring that he should sell for wards. It's a little shaky. Could have had a pink ward right there for sure. Help out his team with a little bit of this vision control. Hey, Maybe man. taking out some of these wards that are around the pit. They do have two Oracle's lenses, though, so it's not the end of the world. At 60 AP or HP. Makes a difference. <laughs> 60 AP on a Doran's ring. That'd be nice. <laughs> I'd buy that one every time. 60 hit points, not ability power. <laughs> He's too fast. Oh, GBM. Trying to style a little bit. Oh, 
Baron is up. They're gonna send Chaser down to the bot lane to clear this wave. He's got his ult. He can get back to mid if he wants to. But GE Tigers heading up to Baron now. Yeah, they could have sent Trace who has the TP as well. Oh, that may have been smarter because Pantheon still has to walk in order to get back up towards the Baron. Yep, Smeb will be able to push up that lane pretty easily. Ooh, that's a big finish too. We do have the Crucible done on Gorilla now. Yeah. And considering the commitment to hard CC from Genera, that will likely prove quite useful. Pilot's still looking for some good damage right here. He has the BF sword, but he went for the last Whisper after the Bloodthirster, so really isn't going to be hitting very many big crits at this point in time. Meanwhile, Prey has that Muramana, so a lot of damage coming in, and good survivability as well with the Blade of the Ruin King. He knows if he can just outlast the burst, he actually can clean up a lot of these team fights. So things a little bit more passive now as the teams try to regroup a bit. Baron is the point of contention at this point. Janair, they've been trying a lot of Barons today, haven't really gotten any yet. And here's the mid lane push. Okay, so GE drawing Janair back and uh, Chain nearly has his flash back up again, thanks to that distortion enchantment. So that's going to be a pretty critical moment for Janair. They're not going to want to engage until they have oh. that. Uh, GBM comes in to try to do something, but gets poked harder himself. Yeah, shields onto Kuro does make that difficult. Kuro got his Q down in that situation. GBM still a little bit damaged right there, wants to make a move, but may have to recall first. It's going to be one of the longer Baron dances I think we've seen in a while. Oh, GBM. Whenever he tries to go in now for Poke, oh, he just takes a lot of damage. There goes the passive. And this may be the opportunity to Baron. They know they poke G, uh, GBM out right now. Though that Rift Scuttler is pesky to deal with. They're going to start it, however. GBM okay. running from base. He's not going to be there, though. Nope, that's right. It's on the rest of Janair to try to stop this. Lee comes in to the jump back lines. Trace gets a wild growth on him to try to stay alive. Lee low, but they've already killed the top laner. They save him with the monsoon. Yeah, Pilot. Pilot getting out of there. GBM not able to really Ooh, do any damage. Too. Kuro still fine. And Chaser doesn't have his ultimate. Used it in that skirmish. Yep. And it looks like... GE Tigers are going to be able to take this Baron uncontested. GBM running, tries to find it. Ooh. Uh, this is still so risky. I mean, Lee's really low. Kuro's at half health now. Use that W. They're going to get the Baron, and they're going to get out. 15, 15 seconds, seconds yeah, yeah, until that Dragon. Our Observer knows what's up, man. He's on the ball. This is going to be Dragon number four for Jin Air. Such a tense game. Second Baron now for the GE Tigers. We've got a really close gold lead. Oh, GE really wants this. They want to fight it. That's not going to uh -oh. stun. There's the, there's the root. Yeah, Jay could still be in trouble. He's so fragile on that Annie. There's a kill on GBM in the back line. So now Pilot in a little bit of trouble. Somehow GBM got killed by Smeb. Another kill comes in for Kuro. Chaser force a flash away. Smeb comes in. Oh, they managed to bring Pantheon back in while Chaser tried to get back in for the stun and just died. Pilot the only one left now. Trace about to come back up, but he's the only That's one, it. and GE's going to be able to end it. I think right here, Trace, he's going to have to put on a heroic defense, but... I don't know, there's only so much one Lulu can do. Not only great map control from GE, but Doha, it was really their intelligent itemization that won them this game. They started to stack up that MR very early on, and that gave them the survivability against this Fed LeBlanc, wow. including and even a QSS on Gorilla. Then he got the Scimitar, or the, uh, the Crucible, and there Trace goes. When you go back and think about how this game started for Jin Air, it is amazing that GE was able to come back and win like this in 48 minutes. There it is. Zonia's in celebration, and GG, the Tigers take game one. Wow, what a great first game of this series. Excellent play from behind. <laughs> Lee looks they look happy. Like they've, won, they've won the whole series already. With his 1.0 KDA, but anyway. He's like, I survived another game on Rengar. Yes.
GE showing off their strength right there, even when Lee is in such an uncomfortable situation. And Jin Air's early game goes picture perfect. They find a way to adapt. They come back, even making some very interesting item choices like that QSS on Janna, but against the heavy magic, heavy hard CC 